Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today I'm gonna give you guys a part two of my things no one tells you when they tell you to save seeds video. Because I wanna give you guys an update so that you can see what the okra is looking like and the different stages that it's going through. Just because I think it might be helpful. Okay guys, so the fact that I cut off a lot of the leaves and those extra branches on the plant has really made the plant focus on what it needs to do to start producing seed. So you're gonna see a lot of changes in the plant right now and I'm gonna take you guys over there so that you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the update. So as you can see, the aphids are starting to leave these top ones and now they are insanely covering these bottom ones. So guys, I wanna try and get it as close up as possible so that you can start seeing the ridges in here. The ridges in here are the seeds, and someone had asked if I, would, if I was afraid that the aphids were gonna come inside the okra pod, and the answer is no. As the okra pod starts, stops losing like its ability to hold water, the aphids are no longer interested. So as you can see, they go down to the ones that are still a little bit more fresh and have more water in them. So, and then just another update, as you guys can see, there's nothing covering these ones, even though these are right next to it. This one is actually touching this one. And then also with these, there's nothing on these two as well. So once again, it's just all about what your plant is wanting and what it's needing. Now, speaking of needing something, I want to take you guys to my roselle. And as you can see, the top part of the roselle looks beautiful. A lot of the other leaves look beautiful. But then you have this one branch over here that is covered in woolly aphids. And the problem is, is that this one is the lowest branch down here. So what I should have done is, and I tell myself I should do this every year, is I should have pruned off these bottom two branches but I did not so in results for that the bottom two branches this one has aphids and this one has a lot of aphids so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to prune off those those bottom branches and it's because the these two are giving the most damage to the plant so those are the ones the plant wants to get rid of and since this is a plant that doesn't want to grow like too much it loves the hot heat but it doesn't like you know the desert it's not a desert plant so i'm going to try and help it out a little bit by removing those branches and letting it just kind of relax a bit that is the natural cycle of what's happening in the okra and then also what's happening in the roselle those are my two plants right now that have woolly aphids i say aphids weird sometimes guys I know <laughs> a lot of people have told me but I am listening to my plants and seeing what it is that they need the other three okra plants all around them completely healthy the one that is producing a lot of okra that one has hit its peak so that one is going to be the next to go out once it starts getting aphids I am just going to completely take that one out because I'm not saving seed from that one so there's no point in letting it go to seed I can just let that part of the ground sterilize and get ready for the fall and the broccoli, which I'm so excited about. Now the roselle, I want the roselle to be able to be nice and happy and healthy and also to produce a little bit earlier than what it did last year because I think that it's going to be a colder winter, colder winter and a chillier fall. Just a hunch and I mean, even meteorologists are starting to say it now, guys. <laughs> So last year, I want to say my roselle didn't flower until like late October. Like I was posting like whiny videos like, why isn't it my turn to have tea? So when everybody else was like posting all of their like harvests and stuff like that. So 
this year I'm really gonna pay attention and, and last year a lot of you guys told me to uh, prune the plant early and I didn't do it and then I didn't do it this year but I'm gonna go ahead and prune off those branches that I know that are weak now when it came to the monsoon the monsoon really was kind of trying to topple that thing over but I kept it nice and straight and so it grows a really big trunk on it and like that is still probably gonna get like another maybe three, four feet before it starts fruiting. So it, it's a really solid trunk and I'm gonna make sure that it's not off balance. And by it having those aphids, aphids, aphids on the, the lower branches lets me know that the plant really doesn't want them there. Like it's really not doing anything for the plant. So I'm gonna go ahead, prune those off and then allow the plant to be able to balance itself back out and be able to prepare for more growth and probably more high winds because we always have a fake season in between the seasons and we're gonna hit fake fall soon. <laughs> So I hope that this video helps guys. I hope that you guys are following along and trusting the process. <laughs> I'm gonna try and document each time, each different phase that the ochre plant goes through. So there's probably gonna be a part three to this video when I go to probably let the seeds dry out or harvest them. Um, maybe a part three and a part four, depending. There's usually two more stages. So I wanna to really empower you guys to really trust your garden and really trust that nature knows what it's doing and sometimes you can help it out a little bit like I did with removing those bottom leaves in order to give the plant an extra boost and let it go a little bit faster but don't interfere too much guys don't douse your plants with a bunch of stuff don't spray a bunch of different things you know even when it came down to my roselle and it was starting to get woolly aphids I sprayed it with water and just kind of cooled the plant down and tried to see where the imbalances were and where they were going to focus on so these are the things that you can do as the person that is taking care of the garden and you're responsible for the garden's health, but let nature be nature. Let the garden do what it's gonna do. Grow yourselves an organic garden. It's really important, guys. Cause you know what? It'll give you tons of food. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you guys are having a good week. Bye.